Hey, you feel students. So um, I wanted to make this quick video. This is supposed to be a little bit of help. A few of you are asking for another video with some of the uh, trig functions. So um, just a reminder, I wanna bring you back to the unit circle, kind of keep this in mind as you think through doing things with sine, cosine, tangent. When you have an angle that is 30, 45, or 60, then you have these nice exact values that you can use. And in particular, the ones that are one half are the ones that you really want to kind of keep in mind because then you can always um, estimate and determine whether an answer is reasonable based off of those exact values, especially the halves. So when you're looking at the sine of 30 or the sine of another angle, you can always compare that back to the sine of 30 to see if it's close to one half based off of whatever the angle is. So, um, Let's do a quick reminder about what the trig functions themselves are. And when you have a, a triangle, and this is just gonna be a quick sketch here. When you have a triangle with an angle theta, you have your hypotenuse, you have your opposite side, and you have your adjacent side. Now, now that we're getting into inclined planes as well, let me also draw this this way. Okay. And this would be the same angle as that. This down straight line, notice here's the right angle. The side opposite the right angle is always the hypotenuse. If this is where the angle is, the adjacent side is down over here. And then this is the opposite side, or sorry, I messed that up. This is the adjacent side to the angle. And this is the opposite side from the angle, right? And so these two triangles here would be similar triangles at the very least. They might be congruent, but we don't know that. that they, would, they would only be congruent if their uh, lengths are all the same as well. So the hypotenuse is if those were the same. So with this triangle, with hypotenuse opposite adjacent with this triangle, whatever this angle here is, the sine of that angle will always be equal to the opposite length over the hypotenuse length, okay? So if we come back to the unit circle, notice that the sine of 30 degrees, the sine of 30 degrees gives us the length of this opposite side and that this opposite side length is one half. If you kind of bring that line all the way across to here, you see it crosses at the halfway point on the unit circle with that unit vector, okay? And so the length here would be one half of the length of the hypotenuse. In this case with the unit circle, that hypotenuse is one and half of one is one half, okay? Then besides sine, we also have the cosine of theta. And with the cosine of theta, that's adjacent over hypotenuse, adjacent over hypotenuse. And notice that the cosine of 30 degrees, for instance, is still pretty big. This, this decimal value is 0 0.866. The, this is the length of the adjacent side. Notice it's still almost, it's close to, but not the same exact same as the original length of the unit vector. So it's close to one, but it's not exactly one. It's a little bit less. The other trig function that we have is tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent. So if you don't know the unit of uh, the length of the hypotenuse, or if the length of the hypotenuse is calculated and you're trying to determine the angle and you know the adjacent and the opposite lengths, Toa, then you can always find that angle there, okay? So where this often comes into play is when we have vector components, when we have vectors for forces, but we can also do this with velocity and acceleration. I held off on doing as much of it with those. We're gonna do more of it with forces. Let's say we have a five Newton force applied to this object that's floating freely in space and that is applied at a 35 degree angle up from the horizontal. So with reference to the horizontal. So with this vector, we know we're gonna be pushing 
this object in both the X and the Y directions. So the question becomes, well, how much are we pushing it in those directions? So notice that this vector here is really the same as the X direction, right? And that this vector here is really the same as what would be in the Y direction. And so that we can have a triangle here. With this triangle then, we wanna picture this side over here as the opposite side. Right now, that's the same as the Y direction. And this side down here is the adjacent side. And right now that's the same as the X direction. And so to find the opposite side length, remember you would use the sign. And if our hypotenuse is five, then multiplying both sides by the length of the hypotenuse would give us the length of the opposite side. So the sine of theta or five times the sine of theta will give us the length of the opposite side here. So this opposite side, this Y would be five Newtons times the sine of 35, 35 degrees going to give us our answer. We'll, co we'll come back to that, okay? The x side here, this is our adjacent side. And to find the length of the adjacent side when we have the hypotenuse, we want to use the cosine. And so it's going to look just like the y up here did. And this is going to be 5 newtons times the sine, or sorry, times the cosine of 35 degrees, okay? To plug, these, to plug these into your calculator, you would want to um, switch to a calculator. I know this is the Windows one, so it'll look a little bit different. With the Windows calculator, you actually have to plug in the angle first and then pick out the sine function, okay? Now, 35 degrees. That's a little bit more than 30 degrees. Remember the sine of 30 degrees would be exactly one half. This angle is a little bit higher. This makes the Y direction a little bit larger, agreed, than one half. So 0.574, let's keep three sig figs for these. This would be reasonable for the length, okay? Now for our vector on our Y direction, we have to take this whole thing and multiply by five. And so I'm going to write that down on my paper and I'll switch back to that later on. Okay. And then our cosine one, we're going to do something similar. Okay. So we're going to take our 35 degrees times co or the cosine of 35 degrees. Again, the cosine of 30 was 0.866 as a decimal. This is a little bit less than that. As our angle goes up, we would expect our X length to become shorter, right? So um, 0.819 times our hypotenuse length of five gives me 4.10, 4.10 newtons, okay? And so let me switch back to my paper. And so there's our two answers. Those are our two components of this unit vector, okay? Let's do another one and go, let's go ahead and turn our triangle on the side like the triangle that's drawn above. So if we have a vector here, okay? And let's say this one is seven Newtons now. And let's go ahead and say that this angle um, here, I know this doesn't look super great, Let's call this angle 60 degrees, okay? Well, this side is our adjacent side, right? And this side is our opposite side compared to that angle. Now we don't really have uh, symbols for these yet. We will next week when we get into inclined planes, but for now, let's just call these adjacent and opposite, okay? So for the adjacent length and for the opposite length, remember that no matter how the triangle is turned, whichever angle you're looking at, you can always find the adjacent side by using the cosine. And you can always find the opposite side by using the sine, okay? If you changed where the angle was, if we were looking at this angle down here, well, then our opposite and adjacent sides would change, right? But as you can see from the unit, 
circle. If you picture a triangle that's 30, 60, 90, and you change from looking at the 30 degree angle to looking at the 60 degree angle, notice that you get the same values, but that they flip positions, right? Well, the same thing would be happening here if you change the angle you're looking at. The adjacent and opposite would switch positions, but the values would also switch positions. And so you'd still get the same lengths for these sides of the triangle. So the adjacent side here is going to be seven newtons times something, and the opposite side is going to be seven newtons times something. Well, again, remember sine and cosine. Remember, so ka toa, and I heard this from somebody else the other day. Some old hippie caught another hippie. Um, oh shoot! Now I forget the toa part. Um, oh, uh, tripping on acid. Some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. Not that you want to try that. Okay. So sine and cosine. Sine is opposite. Cosine is adjacent. So here we've got adjacent. So it's going to be seven newtons times the cosine of 60 degrees, seven newton times the sine of 60 degrees. Perhaps you remember your special values and that the cosine of 60 degrees is one half. So one half of seven is going to be 3.5. And then the sine of 60 is going to be our 0 0.866 times seven, which gives me, let's say 6.1 newtons, okay? Um, different reasons to keep different amounts of significant figures in different calculations. So that's just what I chose to round to for this one. Finally, we can also flip these around. We can flip around the sine and the cosine um, to help us find angles. And um, the best one though to flip around is actually the tangent. Okay, so the tangent notice relates the opposite and the adjacent sides. So um, let's in fact go through a forward problem with the tangent, and then we can come back and kind of do it in reverse. So let's say you're trying to measure the height of a tree. Here's a tree, okay? Yay, tree. And you know how far away from the tree you are. Um, I don't know, let's say that you're 1.2 kilometers away from the tree and you measure the angle from where you're standing. Of course, you're measuring that angle with the ground, okay? And you measure that angle, and let's say that you determine that that angle is uh, 7.0 degrees. Well, you don't know how far it is to the top of the tree, but you do know how far it is to the base of the tree. And so picture this as being a triangle, right? Where this side now, this is the side opposite the angle. This opposite side is the height of the tree. And we know the distance from our angle to the base of the tree. Well, what relates the opposite and the adjacent sides? Well, it's the tangent function and the tangent of our angle will equal opposite over adjacent. So let me write that out right now. I've got tangent of seven degrees equals opposite over adjacent, which is opposite over 1.2 kilometers, okay? So to get my opposite side, remember I'm still gonna multiply both sides by the denominator, so 1.2, times the tangent of theta times the tangent of seven degrees. So I've got seven degrees and I know you can't see my calculator. I'm taking the tangent of that and I get one point, or sorry, 0 0.123. I'm gonna round that equals. And so then I multiply that by 1.2. And I get my whole length here as 0 0.147 kilometers, okay? Well, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That would be 147 meters. And that would be, let's say about um, 360 feet tall or so. 
that's kind of tall maybe for a tree, but um, not completely unheard of, right? So let me actually Google real quick and see if I can't find tallest tree. Tallest tree in the world, um, 380 feet tall. There we go. In a, a coastal redwood in Redwood National Park in California. Tallest tree in the world, 380, okay? So our setup here is not unreasonable. Now, where this comes in handy, the tangent is, what if you know the lengths of the opposite and the adjacent sides? Well, you can take the inverse tangent of the opposite over the adjacent. So tangent inverse of opposite over adjacent will equal the angle, okay? And so if you have a object that is moving forward at five meters per second, and also moving up at two meters per second. Notice how that makes a triangle. You want to add vectors from head to tail, right? And so let me switch colors here. And here's my resultant vector here in the blue. So the length of the blue I can find doing the Pythagorean theorem, right? Two squared plus five squared equals C squared four plus 25 is 29. And the square root of 29 is gonna be a little bit more than five, maybe say like 5.4. And you can plug that into your calculator and find it exactly. That's not really what I wanna know. What I wanna know is I wanna know this angle here right now. And that angle right there is gonna be the inverse tangent of my opposite over adjacent. So the inverse tangent of two over five or the inverse tangent of 0 0.4. And so let me show you this on the Windows calculator. You're gonna plug in two over five, which notice is 0 0.4. For me, I would come to trigonometry, okay? And lights are out and I don't, oh, and then here I would hit second and that'll give me the inverse tangent. So you wanna look for tan to the negative one. You might see arc tan somewhere, and this gives me 21.8. I think maybe I've done this one before. And so this inverse tangent of two over five would be 21.8 degrees. That's the direction this velocity vector would be going in. But remember, we can do this with all vectors, including forces, okay? So um, I'll post a question or two for you to think about if you're looking at this video so that you can uh, try to apply some of what was in the video for a little bit more practice. Please let me know if you still have questions about these trig functions. We will still be doing more practice with them. I can tell you that on this first free body diagram quiz, you will have to break uh, one vector down into its X and Y components, okay? Please let me know what questions you have.